Next, we will talk about fraud. So, fraud is very, or is fraud is not a new term for you because there are a lot of issues going around about fraudulent thing, um, fraudulent schemes, diba? mga scams. So, those are fraudulent activities. So, you are already familiar generally with what fraud is. Now, in the accounting world or in the business world, fraud is also a highly sensitive topic. Diba? That is why there is the existence of auditors because they are the ones who, for instance, your internal auditors, they help you control or have measures or set up measures so that the company will avoid or minimize fraudulent activities you also have external auditors so that it will help you or give you more assurance that the company is really faithfully representing whatever they are showing or giving to the public so first or let us define then what is fraud Diba? Because we have different definitions of fraud, man. Diba? Naman, magpagpangilad. Naman, pagpamakakra. Diba? So, or scamra. So, what really is fraud? So, how do you define fraud? <clears throat> so, fraud is defined as a false representation of a material fact made by one party to another party with the intent to deceive and induce the other party to justifiable reliance on the fact to his or her demerit. So again, fraud is a false representation of a material fact made by one party to another party with the intent to deceive and induce the other party to justifiable rely, to justifiably rely on the fact to his or her demerit. So ato asang i break down. When we say false representation, meaning false statement or disclosure, meaning dili tinuod ang yang giingon sa imuha. Next, it should be of about a material fact. So a fact must be sub Potential in inducing someone to act. Next is, yahang intention must be to deceive. Again, there must be the intent to deceive or the knowledge that one's statement is false. So, dapat si person nga nagduha, nagbuhat o fraudulent activity, kabaw siya nga fraud na yahang gibuhat. Diba? Iyahad yung intention na mo-commit o fraud. So, Iyad yung intention niya, ilaron ang iyahang customer bar or the, another, or the other party, the opposite, opposite party. And then next is, there is justifiable reliance. So, the misrepresentation must have resulted in justifiable reliance upon information which caused someone to act. Meaning, justifiable reliance, meaning, nito o, judge siya. Diba? Nga, kung unsa man ito yung giingon, is nisalig, judge siya sa imuhang giingon, sa imuha. Diba? So, meaning, katong party nga imuhang giilad is nisalig siya or nilirely siya sa imuhang giingon sa iya ha. So, mo na siya. So, and lastly, the misrepresentation must have caused injury or loss to the victim of the fraud. So, meaning, tungod kayo nisalig man siya na ay nawala sa iya ha. Katungod nisalig siya ni mo sa imuhang pagpangilad. So, that is the legal definition of fraud. So, fraud in the business environment has a more specialized meaning. It is an intentional deception. Again, in the business meaning, it is an intentional deception, misappropriation of a company's assets, or manipulation of its financial data to the advantage of the perpetrator. So, in accounting literature, Fraud is also co commonly known as white collar crime, defalcation, embezzlement, and irregularities. Now, auditors 
encounter fraud at two levels, which is the employee fraud and management fraud, which we'll be discussing in a little while. Now, before that, let's first discuss the fraud triangle. So, what is the fraud triangle? The fraud triangle is said to be the factors that contribute or are associated with management and employee fraud. So, fraud triangle, ketolom na sila kabuk factors that are said to affect a person nga mukumit og fraud. So, those three factors are pressure, here, nakumakita na ninyo, pressure, situational pressure, so, which includes either personal or job-related stress that could coerce an individual to act dishonestly. Second is the opportunity, which involves direct access to assets and or access to information, to acts of uh, information that controls assets. And lastly, third um, factor is the ethics, which, per which pertains to one's character and degree of moral opposition to acts of dishonesty. Mo nang makita ninyo din hi, di ba? Ethics is at the opposite side of pressure and opportunity. So, more is like ilang gipush ang each other. So, si pressure and opportunity against your ethical standards or ethical principles. So, as you can see here, if a person has high ethical standards or ethical principles in comparison to the pressure and opportunity na iyahang na feel or na encounter, is there is a lesser chance of committing fraud or no fraud. Now, if the pressure is mas bugat, pressure and opportunity is greater in comparison to the ethical principles of the person, mo nang makakumit siya o fraud. So, mo na ang imuhang fraud triangle. Pressure, opportunity, and ethics. Now, let's have an example or let's provide an example which or ano na lang. This fraud triangle, again, remember that, kay, ato na niya nang i-discuss sa employee fraud and management fraud. So, we will um, provide an example there. 